Okay, so as we saw a few minutes ago, the foundation of high emotional intelligence is what? It's self-awareness and self-regulation. First, we have to be aware of our emotionality and when our emotions are, uh, are um, flaring up in some way or another. And then based on that awareness, we need to take the proper action, the healthy, the productive action. And in a lot of cases, we humans fail to do that. And so what we're going to look at now is the fundamental tool that we work with for increasing our emotional intelligence by increasing our self-awareness and then our self-regulation. So raise your hand if you've ever done something and then regretted it later. Yeah, see, all the hands are up. We all, we all have that. Now raise your hand if you've ever known you should have done something and failed to do it. Yeah, most of the hands are up. So those are situations we, where we are in a reactive mode. We're kind of like on autopilot. It's like we've stopped thinking. We've stopped being in, literally stopped being in control of, of uh, how we're feeling and how we're acting. And that's where all the damage gets done. That's where all the productivity is lost. That's where relationships get damaged. It's all when we're in that reactive mode. And we're not in that reactive mode all that often, right? Most of us spend a good deal of our time taking actions that are based on sound thinking, strategy, vision, company goals, etc. But in those moments when we're out of control and we're operating in some, in some sort of automatic reactive mode, that's where all the damage occurs. So we're going to talk about the distinction between reaction and response. When your actions, or lack of actions, when you're choosing to take action or not, based on thoughtfulness, goals, missions, company vision, you are in response mode. And when you are automatically operating in some sort of a knee-jerk fashion, you are what we call the reactive mode, where you are reacting. And there are four reactive modes that we, uh, that we can be in. The first one is fight. The fight mode is any time we're attacking or counterattacking or defending. So that's everywhere from yelling to insulting to slander. Um, see what else is in there? Uh, um, sabotage oftentimes happens. Anytime we're engaged in some sort of attack mode, that's a fight reaction. So let's look at, let's look at a couple of examples here. So anyone ever yelled at someone? Yeah, like half the hands are up, right? So does yelling work? No, of course not, it doesn't work. Do we want to be yelled at? No. When we yell, get yelled at, does it, does it cause us to take proper actions? No, we know this. Yet, so much of the time we yell. And when we're yelling, it's almost always because we're in a fight mode. We're automatically lashing out at someone. So that's fight. And these are all out of biology, by the way. These are all survival mechanisms that have been developed over millions of years evolutionarily. So the second category of reaction is flight. So flight is any time you're escaping or leaving a situation automatically without thought. So raise your hand if you have ever given up on a project. Just said, you know what? Screw it. I'm just not going to work on it anymore. I'm not going to put my time into this anymore. You know, raise your hand if you've given up on a job or a relationship because you were frustrated or angry. Yeah, lots of hands up. It's very, very common. Most of us have done this at one time or another. That's what we call the flight reaction. I call it the Southwest Airlines reaction. Want to get away? Yes, we all do from time to time. And when we do, all kinds of damage occurs. And I'm sure you can think of examples of that where, where you've personally abandoned some situation or some relationship and it's caused damage to yourself or others. The third survival mechanism that we can be in when we're reacting is called freeze. This is a lack of action. So this is, for example, not returning the phone call to the customer you're scared of talking to or not applying for a promotion that you think you could get and that you know is on your career path. Anytime you're not doing something out of fear or frustration or some other negative emotion, you are in the freeze mode. In relationships, it looks like this. 
You've heard the expressions, right? Give someone the cold shoulder, freeze them out. Anytime we're not communicating or not taking action when we know we should be, that's freeze. And a lot of damage occurs from that. You know, raise your hand if you've had someone give you the cold shoulder. How did that feel? Felt terrible, right? Raise your hand if you've given someone the cold shoulder or if you've, you've intentionally not done something that you know you should have done. Yeah, see, most of the hands are up. That's freeze, and lots of damage occurs from the freeze mode. And then the fourth category is facade. Now, in the, na in the nature world, this looks like, for example, an animal like the chameleon, which literally changes the color of its skin to blend in. Facade is any time we're putting up some sort of a front. We're pretending things are one way when they're actually another way. So like at work, for example, um, what we often see is people will be working on a project, which is clearly behind. And they get asked, hey, how's it going? And they say, oh, things are good, things are good. And then our hope is we'll somehow be able to magically make it up and get the thing back on track. But we know that's not going to happen, right? Raise your hand if you've done this. Yeah, see, if they're going to answer up. It's a pretty common thing at work. Now, how about at home? At home, this is very common. Uh, you know, most of us at one time or another have been asked, hey, how's it going? Or what's wrong? And we say, oh, things are fine, nothing's wrong. Total lie. We can be burning up inside. But oftentimes, what are we saying to the outside world? I'm fine, things are good, yeah, 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 well, no, I'm good, yeah, no, don't worry about me. Don't worry, or how about the, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the mom, <laughs> most of us have moms, right? How about the moms that go, oh, don't worry about me, don't worry about me, I'm fine. Those are all examples of facade. And a lot of damage occurs here because when we're not being honest about how we feel or the status of a situation, we don't give the other people around us the benefit of that information. So all four of these forms of reaction are where all the damage occurs. And we all, from time to time, some of us more, some of us less of the time, find ourselves in one of these reactive states. Now, let's look for a minute at the biology behind this. This is very interesting. I'm going to take you on a quick tour of your brain. And uh, my apologies in advance for my poor artistic drawing. So this is your brain. And the top of your brain is the prefrontal cortex. This is the largest part of your brain, and it's the thinking part of your brain. It's where you analyze things and make decisions and decide to take action. Now, there's another tiny little part of your brain, a little bit down lower, down here, and it's called the amygdala. And all of the information about what's happening around you comes into the amygdala. So what you're hearing and what people are telling you comes into here. What you're seeing comes into here. What you're smelling comes into the amygdala. All your um, motory and sensory feelings come into here. And taste comes into here as well. As well as balance and temperature, all that kind of thing. So the situation you're in at any given time and everything happening around you, what people are doing, what they're saying, etc. All that data all pours into the amygdala. And the amygdala has one very simple job. It checks its database for threats. So there's a threat database here. And the amygdala wants to answer one question and one question only. Is what's happening right now perceived by me to be a threat? So when I look in the threat database, do I see that this situation is a possible threat? If the answer is no, so this is the no path. If the answer is no, so the, th the question is threat. And if the answer is 
know all the information about what's happening right now is fed to the prefrontal cortex, where we can analyze it, think about it, and, um, and uh, decide what action to take, what action not to take. Now, here's the bad news. If the answer is yes, yes, it is a threat, then immediately the adrenal glands the pituitary gland and the hypothalamus are all put into a survival state. So adrenaline is pumping through our veins, uh, growth hormones are being emanated, our breathing gets faster, we start to sweat. You guys all know what this feels like, right? We get into that survival threatening mode. And when that happens, here's the amazing thing. None of this information goes to the prefrontal cortex anymore. So literally the thinking part of our brain is turned off because biologically we perceived a threat and we got to be ready. Ready for what? Ready to fight or flee or freeze like play dead and hope the prey doesn't notice us or facade, blend in. So when our survival is actually threatened, this is a critical mechanism. You know, your kid's about to be playing in the street, about to be run over by a car. You want this thing to be triggered. You come face to face with a hungry grizzly bear in Yellowstone Park. You want this to be going on. You want to be able to run like crazy or climb a tree or lift the car off of the, uh, off of the accident victim. Here's the problem. 99% of the time, the perceived threat is a falsely perceived threat. We feel threatened, and our emotions are triggered by the perceived threat, even though our survival is not at stake. It's just not. But we think it is. Our brain thinks it is. And so we literally stop thinking. Our actions are no longer driven by thought. They're now driven by automatic survival reactions. So this is the biology that, um, that's sort of behind this reactive mode. Now, here's the really bad news. Once you get triggered into this state, you're going to stay there for four to eight hours. During that time, you're going to be reacting, doing various kinds of damage, as we've talked about. Your immune system is going to be weakened. All kinds of negative uh, consequences are occurring inside your body. That's what we talk about, you know, people make themselves sick. Absolutely, this is making me sick. We say this to ourselves. It's literally true, and neuroscientists have proven it. Now, here's the other amazing thing. When we do things that calm us and balance us, center us, ground us, things like going for a hike in nature, gardening, meditating, prayer for the religious people in the world, those activities generate the exact opposite effect. And the adrenaline is lowered. These other, the, all these other glands have a lowered state of, of uh, survival mode. And literally, our immune system is strengthened. And, um, and our ability to be creative and be resourceful, all those things are enhanced when we do, th when we do things that intentionally put us into a grounded, centered, balanced state. Now, what do we do about this? Okay, so we get it. Oftentimes we find ourselves in a reactive mode. That's where all the damage occurs. So what can we do to snap ourselves out of this mode when we catch ourselves in what's called the amygdala hijacked state? When our amygdala has hijacked our brain and therefore our body, what do we do about that? How do we get out of that? How do we cut off this four to eight hours and make it, say, four to eight seconds? Well, here's the tool that does that. When you find yourself in a fight mode, what you can do is ask yourself, what action can I take that's empathetic? So coming from empathy, seek to understand, ask clarifying questions. Try and figure out why the other person is attacking you. And once you know that, once you gain some understanding, you'll automatically come out of fight mode. And you'll be able to look at, okay, how can I meet their needs and my own? 
If you find yourself in the, in the uh, flight reactive mode, you just want to get out of here. You're in Southwest Airlines mode, you want to get away. The antidote for that is evaluation. Stop and evaluate. Take actions that are evaluative in nature. Maybe five deep breaths. Maybe I'll stay here and keep talking instead of running out of the room. Maybe I'll think about the implications of quitting the project or quitting the job or quitting the relationship. So stop and think rather than automatically getting out of the situation. When we find ourselves in freeze mode, remember freeze is lack of action. It's doing nothing when we should be doing something. The antidote for that is enthusiasm. And enthusiasm is a general word for taking action with energy. So bringing energy to a situation. If you take yourself out of freeze mode, you must do something. I call this the Nike mode. Just do it. Do something. Almost anything. Literally doing any sort of action when you're in freeze mode will snap you out of that freeze mode and get you moving. Even if the initial action you take isn't the right action, at least doing something is better than doing nothing when you're in freeze mode. And finally, when you find yourself in the facade reactive mode, meaning you're in some sort of denial or not, not confronting the truth or not sharing the truth, the antidote for that is ethics. Be honest. Be honest with yourself. Be honest with others. Fess up. Speak your truth. Do it with love. Do it calmly, but speak your truth. If the project is behind, tell people around you, hey, the project's behind. Here's the situation. Here's my ideas for how to get the project back on track. What ideas do you have? How can you help? There's a lot of things that can occur if we come out of facade, talk about what's actually happening, and then figure out what to do about it. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to, we're going to look at our lives through a dialogue process, where we're going to see and get in touch with what kind of damage is occurring at work and at home when we're in this mode, and which of these four modes do we tend to spend most of our time in. Then we're going to look at how much more productive and happier and less stressed we could be if we were to intentionally choose one of these four E's over here, empathy, evaluation, enthusiasm, or ethics instead. So that's the exercise we're going to do now, get into your team to